Hi there. Now, when it comes to working with standard integrals like this one here, 1 divided by a squared plus x squared, where a is a constant, then if we're integrating this with respect to x, I showed you in an earlier video the result was 1 divided by a multiplied by the inverse tan or arctan of x over a plus a constant of integration c. But if we've got limits here, care must be taken. Let's just have a look at the graph of y equals the inverse tan of x. Notice that the values that you get in the range lie between minus pi upon 2 to pi upon 2. You should be familiar with this graph. If not, do check out the video that runs through this. Now, I'll give you a couple of examples. We'll work through these examples. When it comes to this second one, you might like to pause the video and have a go yourself. But for this first one, we've got the integral of 5 all divided by 9 plus x squared with respect to x between the limits x equals minus 3 and x equals 3. So this can be changed into this form very easily if we pull out the 5 in front of the integral because it's a constant. And then we can think of this as 1 divided by 3 squared in place of 9 plus x squared. And this is integrated with respect to x between the limits minus 3 and 3. And I can see that this integral then is going to be 1 over a. a would be the 3, so we're going to have 1 third here, inverse tan of x over 3. And if I pull the 1 third out the front with the 5, we're going to end up with 5 thirds. 5 thirds then times the inverse tan of x over 3. And then if we just put the limits in, the limits then go between minus 3 and 3. So what we've got then is the 5 thirds at the front, and then this is multiplied by the inverse tan of, and we put the 3 in, we get 3 over 3, so it'd be the inverse tan of 1. And then we subtract from this the inverse tan of what we get when we put minus 3 in. So minus 3 over 3 is minus 1. So the inverse tan and minus 1. So we end up with the 5 thirds. And when it comes to taking the inverse tan of 1, make sure we're in this range here. And we find that if you use a calculator, you end up with pi upon 4. OK, so you've got 5 thirds multiplied with pi upon 4. And then you've got minus and the inverse tan of minus 1. Well, that's got to be over here in the range minus pi upon 2 to 0. And if you do that on your calculator, you find you get minus pi upon 4. So we've got minus, minus pi upon 4 there. So working this out in the bracket, that becomes pi upon 2, times it with 5 thirds, and you end up with 5 pi on 6. Now, for the second one, I've got the integral then of 3 divided by 49 plus 4x squared integrated with respect to x going between x is naught and x equals 7 over 2. So if you'd like to have a go at this one, then just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, either fast forward just to check out your solution or I'll take you slowly through the work solution. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. Well, with this one, we've got the 3 here, which is a constant. So I can pull that out the front of the integral. And then because I haven't got a 1x squared here, like we have in the integral here, I pull out the 4 in front of a bracket. So I've got 1 here divided by. And if I pull 4 out, then we've got inside the bracket 49 over 4 and then plus x squared 
and this is integrated with respect to x between those limits 0 and 7 over 2. So cleaning this up further I can pull this 4 out the front of the integral so we've got 3 quarters here and then I've got the integral going from 0 to 7 over 2 of 1 over and then for the 49 over 4 I can think of this as 7 over 2 all squared and then plus at the x squared and that's integrated with respect to x. So the a is 7 over 2. So for the integral part I can see it's going to be 1 divided by a, 1 divided by 7 over 2 which is the same as 2 7. So I've got 3 quarters then multiplied by 2 7 the 1 over a value. And if I just set up some square brackets here when it comes to the integral of this then we've got the 1 over a which turns out to be 2 sevenths and it's just going to be the inverse tan then of x divided by 7 over 2 which turns out to be 2 sevenths x there and that's between the limits then of 0 and 7 over 2 so 3 quarters times 2 sevenths, that gives me 3 fourteenths. And then I've got to put my limits in. And if I put 7 over 2 for x here, I get the inverse tan of just simply 1. And if I put 0 through, I get 0. So it's minus the inverse tan of 0. Just square that bracket off there. So we end up with 3 fourteenths multiplied by the inverse tan of 1. And that's got to be between 0 and pi upon 2. So if you do that on your calculator, you find you get pi upon 4. So you've got 3 fourteenths times pi upon 4. And the inverse tan of 0, well that's 0. So it's minus 0 there. And cleaning this up, we end up with... 3 pi over 56. Okay, so I hope that's given you an idea now on how we go about handling limits then when we've got this particular standard integral. Just make sure your values that you quote from your inverse tan lie between minus pi upon 2 and pi upon 2.